So Alan already talked about some of the basics of stage three, but I want to make two points as we start off. One is we have two regimens, cisplatin, etoposide, carboplatin, paclitaxel. They have not been compared head to head. You cannot take a 65 patient trial published in lung cancer in 2012 and say superiority with the p-value of 0.04. So uh, I'm gonna discount that off. You can, but uh, I don't think the good audience are gonna buy it. Uh, so <laughs> the second thing is, when you look at stage three trials done over the past three decades, you would see that the median survivals have increased from nine months, 13 months, 16 months, and 22 months. And Alan showed us the Hogg Hoosier Oncology Group trial and showed that the 23 months median survival seen with cisplatin etoposide tells you that's better. Well, if you go back and look at the SWOG studies that use the same cisplatin etoposide, the median survival there was 17 months. So it's not like somehow in Indiana the cisplatin etoposide works better. The improvement in overall survivals is largely uh, not only from the treatments, but more so from stage migration. We're using more and more PET scans now, and therefore we're more accurately staging patients with stage threes. So those so-called micro or, or minimal stage fours are now taken out of the mix, and that's why we're seeing some of these stage three numbers go up. So keep that in mind when you compare numbers across. We all do comparisons across trials, but this is one specific area where we're seeing the median survivals go up to now 24, 26 months. And I'll show you a trial with carbotaxol that has a median survival of 23 months as well, suggesting that some of this is not just uh, the fact that treatments are getting better, we're also doing better staging. So we can all agree that concurrent chemo is superior in patients with a good performance status. Uh, there's no clearly defined role for induction or consolidation therapy. And integration of targeted agents is still at a very experimental stage. And that's the case even for patients with an EGFR mutation on uh, alkyl arrangements. So the question is, what's the optimal chemotherapy regimen from a systemic therapy standpoint? Uh, and can EGFR inhibition improve the efficacy? And we have carboplatin, paclitaxel, cisplatin, etoposide as two regimens that are widely used. Uh, in a recent survey, I found that 80% of U.S. oncologists use carboplatin paclitaxel in this setting. Uh, the cisplatin permetrexid is uh, questionable. I'll come back to that to make a couple of points uh, in the second half of my talk. So here are the reasons to choose carboplatin and paclitaxel. It's better tolerated. It's easy to give in the outpatient setting. And I would argue that the survival outcomes that we've seen with trials that utilize carboplatin paclitaxel are just as good as survival outcomes seen in just platinum toposide. The CLGB induction trial also, when you took out those uh, poor players which were, that were included in that particular trial, the median survival of 16 months with carboplatin paclitaxel concurrent radiation regimen. And the other important thing is, as you look at what's the next step with stage three disease, how are you going to make systemic therapy better? People are already doing trials integrating targeted agents with chemotherapy. And all of those trials are using weekly carboplatin paclitaxel regimen because you cannot add something on top of cisplatin etoposide. It's, it's a toxic regimen. So what's the reason then to choose cisplatin etoposide? Well, if you believe in torture. <laughs> so this is the LAMP trial where carboplatin paclitaxel was studied. Admittedly, this is a large phase two trial where the, uh, Dr. Choi and Bellani looked at three different approaches. One involved giving two cycles of carboplatin paclitaxel as induction, and then they just got radiation. That's a sequential approach. This trial was done uh, several years ago, at which time sequential was still an acceptable control, uh, control arm. Arm two was patients got two cycles of carbotaxel and then received the weekly carbotaxel, the induction followed by concurrent chemo RT. And arm three was the concurrent chemo RT, weekly carboplatin paclitaxel, followed by the two cycles of consolidation. So uh, as you can imagine, this arm, um, we all now know that the ARM3 turned out to be uh, the best arm in this trial. And this is something to keep in mind. This arm included two cycles of full doses of carboplatin paclitaxel at the posterior end. And therefore, in our routine practice now, if you do weekly carboplatin paclitaxel, we uh, complete the regimen by giving those two cycles. This trial, you can see that the median survival was 16.3 months for the ARM3, which is 
weekly carbotaxol followed by two cycles of consolidation. And when they compared it to uh, the sequential arm, it was clearly better. The induction arm in this trial didn't do very well, and that was also confirmed by the CLGV trial. So essentially, this trial led to the widespread use of carboplatin paclitaxel. Mind you, there is no FDA-approved regimen in stage 3 disease as of now. Uh, the toxicities, I think, uh, are something you need to keep in mind with when you introduce taxanes into chemoradiation, there is a higher risk of pneumonitis. And I compared the SWOG trial, which involved gefitinib in the uh, maintenance setting, but they used cisetoposide as the uh, backbone regimen with radiation. Uh, just to give you an idea that there are some toxicities that are more common with the weekly carboplatin paclitaxel <laughs> regimen, one being uh, pneumonitis and the other being esophagitis. Now, the esophagitis is an acute toxicity that does get better, but pneumonitis can be a problem in the long haul. And the risk of pneumonitis is directly dependent on uh, the volume of normal lung that's radiated. Uh, this is referred in the radiation world as the V20, which is the percentage of the normal lung that at least gets 20 gray of radiation. The more your V20, the higher the likelihood of developing pneumonitis. And I would argue that, uh, you know, the size of the tumor, where the nodes are situated, all of these factor into what the V20 turns out to be. So that should be a consideration when you choose appropriate chemotherapy regimen. Now, we all know that chemoradiation uh, is standard of care, but uh, there is still uh, a cure rate of only about 20% to 22%. So how do we get beyond this? Integration of targeted agents is clearly an area of major focus. EGFR targeted agents uh, are being studied, both TKIs and the monoclonal antibodies. So here is a phase two trial, the RTOG conducted, weekly carboplatin and taxol given with cetuximab in order to see if this would uh, lead to good outcomes. Uh, this is uh, a single arm phase two trial, has been published, and the median survival here was 23 months. Now, if you think it is cetuximab that made the median survival go to 23 months, I have the Brooklyn Bridge to sell you after the session. Now, the reason to give cisetoposide or the proponents of it say that you are able to give full dose chemotherapy with radiation so you can get better control of micrometastatic disease. Well, if full dose chemoradiation approach is indeed effective, uh, this was the approach Dr. Govindan pursued in the CLGB, where he gave full dose of cis, uh, carbopamitrexid with radiation and compared it to carbopamitrexid plus uh, cetuximab. This was a randomized phase two. And he showed that both arms had a median survival of about 22, 22 months. Uh, obviously, it was 50 patients per arm, not large enough to look at the effect of cetuximab in a conclusive manner. But clearly, this had a median survival of 22 months. But as you saw in the PROCLAIM trial, when the same full dose regimen was tested, it turned out to not be an effective strategy. So in a sense, the fact that full dose chemotherapy with cisplatin pemetrexid did not pan out <clears throat> tells you that it's not everything. Giving full dose is not everything. Now, Dr. Alan Sandler would argue that it's cisplatin etoposide is so good that nothing can beat it. Uh, now, if more was better, the radiation oncology community always believed that more radiation is better. So this was the trial that was done, RTOG 0617, where they gave a higher dose of radiation, 74 gray versus 60 gray. This trial had four arms. One, was, uh, one question was whether cetuximab adds to chemo RT. The second question was whether 74 gray is better than 60 gray. And this trial showed that 74 gray was grossly inferior to 60 gray of radiation. Look at the median survival, 28 months with standard chemo RT, and that was weekly carboplatin paclitaxel, by the way. Some of these patients got uh, cetuximab, but again, 28 month median survival. I don't think there's a single cisplatin topside study with that kind of uh, uh, median survival. Are you aware of any, Alan? I, I have no recollection of that, Your Honor. <laughs> So here are uh, 74 gray was associated with significantly higher toxicity. Uh, as you can see here, esophagitis was higher. Um, and uh, therefore, RTOG concluded that high dose radiation cannot be recommended. This is exactly what they said. 
high dose had inferior survival, the high dose had higher local recurrence rate, and there was no clear reason they could come up with for why the outcomes were not very good. So that much for thinking that more is better, high dose is better. So that's why I, I don't think we have enough reasons today that just because we can give full dose of cisplatin etoposide, it's necessarily better. The trials have not compared these two regimens head to head. I think if you look at all the good studies done with weekly carboplatin paclitaxel, followed by two cycles of carboplatin paclitaxel, the survival outcomes are uh, just as good as what you've seen with other studies. Uh, and I would continue to uh, argue that there's no clear proof that full dose chemotherapy approach is superior. And when you think about the future, people are not going to add targeted drugs to cisetoposide. It's going to be to carboplatin paclitaxel. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Ram. Excellent. <laughs>